I'm here at the Jake Gaither House, a historic site with George Godfather Thompson, a personal friend and the trainer for FAMU, personal friend of Coach Jake Gaither. Welcome, Godfather. Thank you. Now, you were trained at FAMU for 49 years, correct? Yeah. And this was under Coach Gaither? Well, for some yeah, of it? Uh, some of it, yeah. Okay. He, he, yeah. He did the whole thing. He changed it with me. I got hurt, and then I went to do, go and recruiting with him and all these things. I traveled with him, and I would drive anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Anywhere I went with him. And uh, the, he would always, he, he taught me a lot. Because his first, I, I thought, Players was just players, mm -hmm. you know. They couldn't beat me because I was stronger than most of them. I didn't weigh but 152 pounds, but I had a car and a motorcycle and money. That's what they didn't know about. <laughs> and uh, he uh, would get in the or go where we were going, whatever he wanted to ask me. What we'll talk about. We'll talk about it. But and the kids always called me the Godfather because I did whatever. You know, I needed to do and some, and and half of the guys who come to school, after one recruit rooting trip with him, I understood what he really meant, and, and I had to do it. He would go to the parents' house and tell him to his son to come to go. I wanted him to come to Florida, and mm -hmm. he says, and I wanted him to get get his education, stay out of trouble and give me all he got on the football field, in that order. He said, and I'm not concerned to really did it, hey, how, what kind of man he is. I'm concerned about what kind of father he will be, and husband he will be, 10 years from now, what kind of children he have. Those are the things. Because if he just come, stay in school and get his lesson, will he graduate? Because mm -hmm. we had like a pit team and a whole football team mm -hmm. practice, ran everybody else that knew about that. And they would do that. And when, if you came out of the pitch, you'd be all American just by the coast because we had enough people to, to move. Now, you know, that, that's an interesting point that you bring up. He's not only thinking about the type of player that this, this man would no, be, that was it. but it was what type of husband, so, man, father, <laughs> citizen. Right? That's right. What type of citizen he would be? That's exactly. that's, that's tremendous. And he's changed, you know, changed me in that way too. Really? Yeah. How because, so? Because when he said that, you know, I had I've ne I had never worked for anybody but my dad, mm -hmm. and we had a junkyard, a woodyard, and all that. You know, you know like I, I owned my first car. I was ten years old, and and all that. And I had a mother who went to different churches to pray for people and all that. Mm -hmm. My mother said, never heard her use the word damn. And I never seen my daddy without a gun. And of course, you know, we had to go get 150 acres of land. They had people to cut the trees down. We'd go haul them. But I couldn't go get them because I couldn't shoot. Mm -hmm. So I had to do all that stuff. So, Coach Gaither, uh, you met him back in what, 1950? Yeah, in 19, yeah, 50, yeah, 1950. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I knew of him because my dad was born in Sop Chop. Okay. But he would always tell me, you know, that you're supposed to be real nice to, to people. And I was nice to him, always nice to him. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, but, and you don't try to encourage other people to do wrong things. I said, no. I said, my father, the main thing that I had to do, the first thing my dad told me, he said, if you can't discipline yourself, you can't discipline anybody. Mm -hmm. And I've lived my whole life discipline everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a discipline with me. And then what you do, I'll tell you whether I think it's wrong or not, but I'm not doing it because you think it's it. And that's why they always call me the Godfather, because if they got in trouble, I was going to get you out. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were a troubleshooter, huh? <laughs> well, if, if they were wrong, if the people were wrong in the process, if you sat down and talked to a kid, who just come to school, and somebody say he came to your store and took some gum or something like that, and the next thing I know, the police got you, and, and I called me, and here I am, to, and I asked him about that, and, and I explained to them, you, mm -hmm. you don't take people's stuff like that. I said, you ask for things right. like that, and if you, get, you don't really have to have it. Is but, this true? And so, which I said, if you do that, 
you were doing it the right way. Were well, y'all a good team? We were really a good team. Really? We were a really good team. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we, were, we had a deep, most of the guys, but you had a pit team and we had a regular team. The pit team played defense for us all the time to do our game. And we also, they had a run the other offense for the, for the other teams that we would come against. Mm -hmm. And we did the stuff on that. Did you spend a lot of time in this house? Yeah, I told you I lived in it before he did. And then uh, after that, I'd be down here all the time. Anytime they want get the yard cut, I go get somebody to cut the yard. Uh, and, and all of that, yeah, I'd be here all the time. Mm -hmm. And be down here to eat like all the time. And when I later uh, stayed on here, I moved down in this apartment down there, which was 212 mm -hmm. down with him. Okay. But I had a wonderful time with him, really. And I tell people all the time that, you know, he changed my life. I, he kept me from getting, you, I couldn't get in trouble for what say. And then when the, every, you know, the government all would come to games here all the time. And he gave Jake uh, a raise one time. And so <laughs> he came out and he asked Coach, Do you have, do you, what did you like the money I gave him? He said, well, it was really good, all that, but we didn't use it. He said, he didn't use it. And, uh, he said, my coaches are married. They got children and they need money. And, uh, and I was working too at the time. So he asked me if I needed some money. I told him no. So he said, I gave, I gave it to the coaches and all those men and they, who, they, who need the money. And nobody but me and Sade and George, and we're going to eat and sleep whatever we, do, what we want to do. But that was okay. It was fine. Wow, that's great. You know, I did have the great opportunity of attending your 90th birthday party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there were a lot of former players and folks involved with family athletics that had a lot of great things to say about you and about Coach Gaither. So, oh, you know, you all seemed like you had a really special connection. We did. And mm -hmm. see, I feel I like guys, I've had guys stay into classes like, I look at your transcript when you're going to register, know you're not going to pass chemistry, I know you, but you had to take it. And you know you're not going to pass English and all that. So I go to, I go to the teachers, and the teacher would tell me how, they got, how many guys they could take. And so I put two or three in there and you just you're not registered in the class, but you got to be there on time. You got to do it. And sometimes I, I met a guy in California, and then I kept him in it like three semesters just for him to get out. Hmm. And he finally made it and he graduated. But wow. We were, we were that all we wanted that is tremendous. Yeah. Well, if there were any words that you could give to young men today in terms of some encouragement, you know, based on just the way that you and, and Coach Gaither helped raise these leaders, you know, right. what would you say? I tell them they, they, know, they know right from wrong. And always discipline yourself. Don't, follow, don't just follow your friends because you say they're your friends. If you're getting in trouble and not your friends, you try to talk them out of it and do all that. I've never been to, I went to a jail one time for speeding, and that was the only time I've ever been. And I've had a car, you know, ever since I was 10 years old. And, and I've done a lot of speeding, but, you know, you've got to keep yourself to discipline. And see, like, people drink and smoke and do all that stuff. I never had a cigarette. I never do nothing. So it wasn't, I, I know one thing from biology, and I said it wasn't healthy for you, so I never do it. Mm -hmm. I said, now, people can do it. It's fine. They can do it. But for me, you know, I just yes, can do it. Got you. All yeah. right. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Well, you're welcome. All right. You're welcome. Well, we appreciate your stories, and we know that Coach Gaither's legacy lives on through you every, and all yeah, those folks he touched. Every day of my life, I think of him. His mother, she was here, and all that. When she was here before she passed, she still did. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks so much.